Hey everyone, I'm Kong, and this is a special episode of Should You Summon. The purpose of this video is not to be an in-depth guide or build for these characters, but rather a high-level overview using four criteria to help you decide whether you should spend your hard-earned vouchers and crystals. How they fit into your team, whether they unlock any bonds, what kind of content they get used for, and their future availability. So let's jump right in and take a look at these two beginner-friendly banners. The first, Flawless Aegis, features Leden and Tiaris, and the second, Indomitable Trist, features Leon and Lana. Unlike normal summoning banners that come and go on a rotation, these are available for two weeks after the creation of a new account. If you start the game today, you'll have access to these two banners for two weeks. It's important to note that these aren't destiny or focus banners, so it's possible to pull off banner characters even on your first SSR. That means that while you do have an 80% chance of getting one of the characters that's featured, you have a 20% chance of getting a totally different SSR character. First, let's talk about Leden. Leden is a premier PvE tank. Ideally, he does use a couple of runestones to unlock phalanxes from his king class, and then ends up in his highly defensive Templar class. His Divine Guard skill lets him replace his attack with the sum of his defense and magic defense. His talent lets him counterattack melee opponents twice, allowing him to deal massive counterattack damage. He's a member of the Protagonists, buffed by Matthew, and the Legion of Glory, buffed by Leden, Elwyn, and Grenier, so he does carry his own faction buff. For newer players, the faction buff here refers to fusion powers. Once you get to a certain point in the game, it starts to become very important to build your team around certain factions, and these fusion powers, or faction buffs, give everybody in that faction boosted skills, or boosted stats. For bonds, Leden unlocks the attack bonds for Chris, Grenier, and Narm. So no SSR characters are held back, but these are fairly common characters. Leden himself needs Chris to unlock his defensive bond, and the SSR character Elwyn for his attack bond. Now for Leden, unlocking the attack bond isn't necessarily a high priority, because he converts his defensive stats into his attack, but later in the game when skill starts to become more important, particularly in PvP, that's when you might want to start thinking about this. For content, Leden is useful for pretty much everything in PvE. Paired with a good healer, he'll carry you through to the endgame. He's great against the Dark, Fire, and Thunder Dragons, and in the Eternal Temple he's useful against Phoenix and Scylla. He can hold his own in PvP as well, but he's not necessarily the best tank choice there. Landius and Juggler both tend to be preferred. Still, you do need to have a couple tanks in your Apex Arena box, so if you're lacking others, a well-built Leden can serve as purpose. For availability, Leden will appear in late June on a Destiny banner with Rachel and Ultimuller. Tiaris is hands down one of the best characters in the game. She's a mobile healer with great support skills in Attack Blessing and Miracle, as well as a talent that gives surrounding heroes ongoing passive healing. Tiaris, paired with a strong tank, forms the core of many successful teams. People jokingly use the term Pocket Tiaris to refer to a Tiaris that basically follows a tank around the map, keeping them alive. She's a member of Protagonists, buffed by Matthew, Origins of Light, buffed by Dehart, Juggler, and Freya, and Princess Alliance, buffed by Shelfaniel and Luna. She unlocks the defensive bonds for Gerald and Layla, and the attack bonds for Dehart, and those are the two characters that she needs to unlock her own bonds as well. For content, she's used for everything. I'm not even exaggerating. In PvE, she's useful for story, time rifts, event challenges, secret realm, joint battles. This includes ancient beckoning battles against Hugin and Munin, Jormagander, and Needhog. She's also a solid meta pick in PvP. Every box needs a handful of healers, and she's one of the best. She should be returning in late April on a Destiny banner with Rachel and Lana. Moving on to the Indomitable Trist banner, we have Leon, who's an exceptionally dominant PvE cavalry unit. If you have or you can get Ultimuller, his faction buff gives Leon unparalleled mobility. This led to the half-joking term Leon Grisser, to describe Leon's dominance in pretty much every PvE activity. He's a member of Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, and Lance, so Leon does bring his own faction buff. He's also a member of Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller and Lanford. He unlocks defensive bonds for Bernhardt and Lana, and attack bonds for Laird and Roga. 
For his own bonds, he needs Laird and the SSR character Elwyn. For content, as I mentioned, in PvE, he gets used for pretty much everything. He's useful in story, time rifts, joint battles, and challenges. He's strong in the fights against the Dark Dragon, Fire Dragon, and Thunder Dragon, as well as versus Phoenix and Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple, and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning. He's functional in AI Arena, but he doesn't show up very much in Apex Arena. Still, because he's Leon and he has such high DPS, he still can put in some good work in Apex Arena. It's just that there tend to be better DPS options there, considering the types of tanks that you usually run into. He should become available again in late July, on a Destiny banner with Elwyn and Bernhardt. Finally, we have Lana. She's a powerful magic DPS hero. Her talent gives her one extra range on her skills, so part of her niche is being able to avoid counterattacks, even from ranged units, by outranging them. She has access to powerful single target and area of effect spells, and excellent soldiers in sorceresses. She's a member of Dark Reincarnation, buffed by Bozel, and Princess Alliance, buffed by Shelfaniel and Luna. She unlocks the attack bond for Sonya, but she doesn't block any SSR characters. For her own bonds, she needs the SSR characters Leon for her defensive bond, and Elwyn for her attack bond. As far as content, she's an excellent overall PvE character. She's one of the important puzzle pieces for defeating the Ice Dragon, and in the Eternal Temple, Leviar. She's also useful against Fenrir and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning. For PvP, she does have some mean skills and equipment synergies that make her a solid pick for Apex Arena. She should become available again in late April on a Destiny banner with Rachel and Tiaras. So, just to summarize these two banners, we have Leden, who's one of the best tanks in the game, with a PvE focus. He's a Legion of Glory faction buffer, and he unlocks bonds for Chris, Grenier, and Narm. Tiaras is one of the top two game-changing healers and one of the best characters in the game. She unlocks bonds for Gerald and Layla and Dehart. Leon is a premium cavalry hero. He's a faction buffer for Empire's Honor, and he unlocks bonds for Bernhardt and Lana. Lana brings powerful magic damage with great range. She unlocks bonds for Sonya. While the first banner focuses on a tank and a healer, which are staples around which you'll build your team, the second banner offers physical and magical DPS units. As a new player, you'll also have access to an ongoing quest that rewards you with a free Shiri, who is another SSR DPS character. And in general, you'll have a bit more ready access to DPS units. For that reason, I highly recommend to summon for Leden or Tiaris first, before moving on to other available banners. Since these two banners are going to be available on an ongoing basis for new accounts, it's hard to say what other banners are currently running or coming up soon, depending on when you watch this video. There are very few characters that a new account would want more than the characters offered here, but I will give a general word of advice. It seems like we're now seeing new characters released into the game, or crossover units, either new collaborations or reruns of collaborations from the last year, every two weeks or so. If you're planning on being a collector, or you want to try to dive headfirst into the PvP meta, then you might want to save some vouchers after you get your hands on one or two of these characters. So hopefully this was a helpful video, hopefully it contextualized these four characters for you. Let me know in the comments if you're planning on summoning for any of these units, and if you do, which ones did you get? Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon.